Greetings, and welcome to the Kingdom Impact Experience. On behalf of Prophet Dr. Terrence Kruger and staff, we would like to say thank you for joining us for today's service. I would like everyone to just give God some praise right now. I just thank God for life today. I just thank God for life, health, and strength. And now all of us here today should be able to praise and thank God because we are here. Thank you, Lord. We're not in a hospital. We're not in the wheelchairs. We didn't come in on crutches. I just thank God for life, health, and strength. I just thank him for being here today. And I thank God for seeing all of your beautiful faces here today. So just thank everyone. I just want to welcome everyone online, everyone that made it in-house today. Just thank you. And we welcome you. And I would like everyone to get ready as we begin today's service with intercessory prayer. Come on, y'all. We got to shift this atmosphere. <laughs> God been too good to us. Oh, yes. Oh, God, I feel so good. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to your name, God. Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah. 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 This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, God, we come right now, God, to give you praise, God, to lift your name up, to say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for what you already done, what you're going to do, Father God, what you're working on on the back that we can't see thank you jesus oh god we thank you right now god we thank you god we choose to press today no matter what our flesh feel like we're gonna press this whole service i'm gonna press even on my way going home hallelujah hallelujah oh god we take control of the atmosphere and we charge it right now god and we already know god that you gonna show up today god and we're gonna show up with you god it's the same spirit it's the same spirit everybody got the same spirit so we're gonna do the will of God today oh God we thank you right now we trust you God we trust you God we trust you we trust you we trust you we believe in you every time we come here God we believe what the word say God oh God we make room for the word God we ask that you touch the speaker right now God that fear will not be her portion father God that that won't be her portion but she'll be confident in delivering your word God she'll be confident in what thus the Lord said, God, she'll be confident moving how you want her to move today. She'll do whatever that you say, God. She won't back down. She won't back out, but she'll come for strong and mighty today because we are strong and mighty in the Lord because we are righteous in Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord, we thank you right now, God. We praise you, God. We're going to praise you until Jesus come get us, God. We're going to praise you even if I don't got a voice. We're going to praise you with our hands, with, our, with every limb you gave us. We're going to praise. We're going to lift up the name. Oh, taste and see how good the Lord is. Have your way in this place, God. Move by your spirit today, God. Move by your spirit, God. We're going to move with you today in a mighty strong way. There's be nothing weak about us today, God. There'll be nothing weak about this service. We're going to come forth and we're going to press like we never pressed before. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Lift your hands and worship him. Open your mouths and praise him. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Right? Amen. He brought us here. He woke us up this morning started us on our way with nobody but him and we're so grateful and we thank God and we praise God and we honor God hallelujah y'all thankful to be here today you're thankful to be alive today you're grateful and thankful that God woke you up this morning and brought you here hallelujah I'm grateful hallelujah I'm thankful because he didn't have to do it but what? But he did. Hallelujah. And I'm thankful. Hallelujah, Jesus. You are the great God. You are the mighty God. Hallelujah. There is none like you. Hallelujah. We raise our hands and we lift up our faith to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, lift your voices. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is so good. Thank you, Jesus. He is so good. He is so amazing. Hallelujah. He is worthy to be praised. 
Come on, he is worthy to be glorified. He's worthy to be magnified. Hallelujah, Father, we bless you in this place. Hallelujah, Father, we glorify you in this place. Come on, come on, lift up your voices. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, let's magnify him. Let's glorify him. Glory to God. For there is none like him. There is none like him. Hallelujah, Jesus. We bless you for another day. We bless you to be able to stand in your presence. We bless you for being good. We bless you for being God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, God. We thank you for being wonderful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If it had not been for you, I don't know where we would be. Hallelujah. But we thank you that we are able to stand here. We are able to lift up our hands, to lift up our voices, to give you glory. Hallelujah. To give you honor. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 We bless you, Father. We bless you, Father. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, give him glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. There is none like you, Lord. Yes, Lord. There is none like you. Hallelujah. There is none like you. There's none beside you. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. When we look back over our lives and see what you brought us from, what you have delivered us from, we can't help but to lift you to give you glory. We enter into your gates with thanksgiving, into your courts with praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless you. Thank you. Hallelujah. You are so wonderful. Thank you. Jesus. You're so merciful and kind, and I can't thank, thank you, you enough. Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that we have the opportunity to thank come you into God. your house. Thank you, God. Thank Hallelujah. You God. To give you glory, <laughs> to give you the honor, Hallelujah. and to give you the praises. Hallelujah. I want you to move around this room, and I want you to let five people know it's good to see you in the place where God is. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, put your hands together right here. Anybody want the Holy Spirit to come? Yeah, 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 yeah. The song simply says, We're ready for you to move. We invite you to fill this room. Come take your, your rightful place. We need you now. Say, We're ready. For you to move, you to we move. invite you, we invite you uh, to fill this room. Fill this Come room. take your, Come take your, your rightful place. Rightful we place. need you we now. Need Say, come Holy Spirit, hey. come touch your people, come Holy Spirit, hey. come set your people free, come, come Holy Spirit, Spirit. Come, come touch your people, come Holy Spirit, come set your people free. Oh, come on, say, oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. God, we're waiting on you. Desperate for your presence here, we invite you. Uh, fill this atmosphere. Come take your your rightful place. We need you now. We're desperate. We're desperate for your presence here. Your presence come here. feel this come feel this, this, atmosphere. this atmosphere. Come take your come take your, your rightful place. Rightful we place. need you now. We need you Come, Holy Spirit, hey. come touch your people. Come, Holy Spirit, hey. come set your people free. Come, Holy Spirit, come touch your people. Come, Holy Spirit, 
that you are good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And we want you to have your way in our lives. Thank you, Jesus. Have your way, Father. For we can't live and move and have our being without you. It is with you that we are able to do all things. It is because of you that we're able to stand today. Stand here to give you praise. And we thank you for all that you have done in our lives. Overflow in this place. Have your way in this place. We want more in this place. Have your way. Everybody say, Over. you 
Sing that one more time. We can't walk, we can't walk without you, without you. We can't talk, we can't talk without you, without you. We're nothing, we're nothing without you. If it's not pleasing to you, take it out of me. If it's not pleasing to you, take it out of me. If it's not pleasing to you, take it out of me and have your way. If it's not. If it's not pleasing, if it's not pleasing to you, take it out, take it, take out. it out of me. If it's not pleasing, if it's not pleasing to you, take it out, take it out of me, and have, have your way. Sing it again. If it's not, if it's not pleasing to you, take it out, take it out of me. If it's not pleasing, if it's not pleasing to you, take it out of me. It's not pleasing. It's not pleasing to take you. it out. Take it out of me and have, have your way. Sing it again. If it's not pleasing, if it's not pleasing to you, take it out. Take it out of me. If it's not pleasing, if it's not pleasing to take you, take it out of me. Take it out of me. If it's not pleasing, if it's not pleasing to you, take it out. Sing it like this. Hey, we sing.
it out. If it's not pleasing to you, show me, Lord, so I can remove it. Have your way. If it's not pleasing, if, if it's, it's not pleasing to you, take it out. Take it out of me. If it's not pleasing, if it's not pleasing to you, take it out. Take it out of me. If it's not pleasing, if it's not Take it out. Take it out of me. Have your way. Come on, declare that again. Oh, if it's not pleasing. If it's not pleasing to you. Take it out. Take, take it, it out, out of me. me. If it's not pleasing. If it's not pleasing to you. Take it out. Take it out of me. If it's not pleasing. If it's not pleasing to you. Take it out of me. Take it out of me. Declare that again. Whoa, if it's not pleasing. If it's yeah. not pleasing to you. Take it out. Take it out of me. If it's not pleasing. If it's not yeah. pleasing to you. Take it out of me. Take it out of me. If it's not pleasing. If it's not pleasing to you. Take it out of me. Take it out of me. And have, have your way. Come on, sing that again. Say if it's not pleasing. If it's not pleasing. Take it out. Take it out of me. If it's not pleasing. If it's not pleasing to you. Take it out. Take it out of me. If it's not pleasing. If it's not pleasing to you. Take it out. Take it out of me. Have, have your way. Yeah. Come on and we say oh. 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 oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Come on and sing and say. Oh. Sing it again, sing it again, say, oh, 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 say, oh, 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 we say, oh, 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 say, oh, we say, oh, 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 o
Good afternoon once again and welcome, welcome, welcome. We invite you to join us every Sunday at 12 noon for an experience in God's presence. We also invite you to join us every Wednesday night for our impact prayer gathering with our chief intercessor, Brother James Wilson, at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Again, that's at 7 p.m. every Wednesday on Zoom. And you don't want to miss our dive in sessions where you can expect to experience relevant teachings, real talk, and solutions for everyday life on the first and third Thursday of each month at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This week is dive in week, y'all. Hallelujah. So we will be here this Thursday at 7 p.m. right here at 2730 Northwest 39th Avenue in Gainesville, Florida. Or you can join us on Zoom if you are unable to travel. The Zoom ID is 476-023-6983. Again, that's 476-023-6483. Please note that there, I'm sorry, I got to skip that one. Glory to God. Happy birthday to all who were born in the month of April. It is our prayer that your time of celebration be one that is of love, joy, peace, and favor. May the blessings of the Lord make rich and add no sorrow. Youth, it's your time again. Get ready for our next youth gathering on Saturday, April the 27th at 10 a.m. for a day at the beach and a lunch at a local seafood restaurant in Jacksonville, Florida. Each youth is requested to bring at least $25. Now, if you like to eat, <laughs> bring how much you feel like you need. Amen. So that is where we're telling you to at least bring $25. If you want to bring less, that's up to you. But we figured $25 will probably be a decent price range. And if you need a little more help and you just cannot do it, then we will try to do what we can to help you. All youth that are planning to attend must notify Prophet Kruger no later than Sunday, April the 21st, which I believe is next Sunday. Next Sunday is the latest that you will need to let me know if you are going. Please don't assume that I know you're going. Please tell me who is going. Amen. So youth come, relax, have fun, and enjoy um, our next youth outing. Also with um, the youth outing, you know that as we do things as a ministry, we have to do things um, in a certain way. So guys, I'm asking that you will at least wear a tank top or a t-shirt. Please don't come to the beach with your shirt off. Amen. And then we're going to ask that you, you know, you know the way you're your shorts or your swim trunks. Don't wear nothing that's skin tight. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And ladies, please make sure that you wear a T-shirt. If you're wearing a, um, a bikini top, it needs to be something that comes down or covers very well. Amen. And nothing that has your cheeks out. And every ma Amen. Thank you, Jesus. But we would prefer that you wear some type of, even if it's some type of um, uh, fitted, what is it called? Spandex shorts or something, something, you know, to cover well. Um, um, we just want to keep things <laughs> decent and in order. Amen. And so we're going to have us a good time. Please make sure you bring you some change of clothes. Amen. And bring you your own towel because I'm not sharing mine. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. So bring your own towel. Um, and um, like I say, bring a change in clothes. Um so that we can uh, be able to go and have us a good time. And um, Sister Belinda knows more about Jacksonville, so she knows which places to go for the beach. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. So uh, that includes that announcement. Praise the Lord. Now get ready for a time of divine impartation, power, fire, and glory at the 2024 International Prophetic Worship Conference Tour. This conference has been deemed as a true life-changing experience and is set to make its impact for the 12th year in Gainesville, Florida on Friday, August 9th at 7 p.m., Saturday, August 10th at 7 p.m., and Sunday, August 11th at 12 noon. 
and we will, I'm sorry, and we will, it, it will make its impact in Pensacola, Florida on Friday and Saturday, September 6th and 7th at 7 p.m. nightly. We, pr we promise this is an experience that you don't want to miss. So be on the lookout because more information is coming soon. We dare you to expect a miracle. Join us as we go forth to support myself, Prophet Terrence Kruger, as I minister at the following places. On Friday, April 26th at 7 p.m. at Moore Manifestation Church, located at 4000 West Newberry Road, Suite F, in Gainesville, Florida, with Overseer Justin and Lady Candace Thomas for their Friday night glory service. This service will take place in two weeks, so not this coming Friday, but the following Friday, the same week of the youth event. I'm looking for all staff to be there dressed in black. Glory to God, we're dressing up, dressed in black, and we will be there, glory to God, having a good time, and I'm looking for all of y'all to be there. Amen. Also, on Saturday, July the 20th at 3 p.m., uh, we will be at the Way, the Truth, and the Life Global Outreach Ministries Incorporated, located at 1928 Northeast 23rd Avenue in Gainesville, Florida, with Bishop Jasmine Dickens for their There Is a Cure Revival. So everyone you know, so let everyone you know uh, and prepare to receive from God. To receive updates regarding the ministry and its upcoming events, please visit our website and subscribe to our, mail, our emailing list at www.terrencedkruger.com. Again, that's www.terrencedkruger.com. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at TDCMI. Internet, I'm sorry, TDCM International. Again, that is TDCM International. And don't forget to like, comment, and share. If y'all enjoy going back to catch the replays of the videos, please be sure to do this because this helps the algorithm. Amen? So that we can get out there more. For the safety of all guests, please note um, that if you are sick, COVID positive, exposed to someone who lives with you that has COVID or any other sim uh, contagious viruses um, during the time of our scheduled in-house services and events, we ask that you would please refrain from attending the in-house location until you are well and have received a negative result. Thank you in advance for your consider uh, for your cooperation in this matter. And this concludes our announcements for today. Be blessed and have a prosperous week. Amen. Amen. Let's stand to our feet at this time as we get ready to receive the word of the Lord that is coming from our very own Sister Belinda Williams. Put your hands together. Hallelujah. Amen. It's good to see y'all today. It's good to have y'all in the building, in the place. God has just who he wants to be here. And he has whoever, everybody he wants viewing today. Hallelujah. Praise God. Give honor to, give honor to leader, prophet Dr. Terrence Kruger, my mother, and everyone else that is in this place today. Hallelujah. And I just want to give honor to God. God, I thank you, God, for bringing me here, God, and giving me this opportunity, God. I just thank you, God, for your presence that's going to be here, God, that's already here, God. And I just give you all the glory and praise, God. Lord, you increase in me, God, and I decrease, God. You speak, God, and not me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I woke up this morning with this song in my spirit. But as a lot of you already know, this is one of my favorite songs. But this is this was, was in my spirit this morning. 
Say, God is able to do just what he said he would do. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, because he won't give up on you. He's able. Yes, he is God. God is able. He's able. Yeah. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. If y'all know the song, join in with me. Say, God is able to do just what he said he would do. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God. Cause he won't give up on you. He's able. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's able. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Say, oh, 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 he's able. Say, oh, 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 he's able. Oh, he's able. He's able. He's able. Say, God is able. I tried him for myself. He's able. There's nobody greater. Say, he's able. When I was tired. He held me. Say he's able. Say he's able. He's able. God is able. Yes, he's able. He's able. Don't give up on God. Cause he won't. He won't give up on you. He's able. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you believe that God won't give up on you, put your hands together and give him praise in this place today. Open your mouths and say, God, I thank you. God, I praise you. God, I worship you. God, I honor you. There is none like you, oh God. He's able to do everything that he said he was going to do. He's able to do everything, God, that he promised he would do. He promised it so it would come to pass. He's not a man that he should lie. If he said it, it's going to come to pass. If he said it, he's going he's to do it. Amen? Amen? He's going to do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to go on to the word. I have a few scriptures, and then I'm going to dive on in. Amen? The first one is Psalms 51 and 10. Psalms 51 and 10, it reads, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Amen. Again, that's create in me a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Amen. Then we're going to go on to another one. This is where the subject, the topic going to come from. So we're going to go to Job, the first chapter, the 20th through 22nd verse. That's Job, the first chapter, verse 20 through 21, well, 22. It reads, then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground 
and worship and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Then we're going to go down to Job, the second chapter, verse 9 through 10. I'm just running through this. Just jot it down and you can read it in your own time. Amen? Job 2, 9 through 10. And it reads, Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? In all this did not Job sin with his lips. Amen. We got one more. Job 13 and 15. That was Job chapter 13, verse 15. And it reads, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. But I will remain, I will maintain my own ways before him. Again, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. But I will maintain my own ways before him. Amen. My topic for the day is heart check. Again, that's heart check. Now, this heart check that I'm talking about is not, I'm not talking about your physical pulse or your physical heart that's in your body. Because you can, you can feel your pulse and make sure that your pulse is there and it's beating. Well, it better be beating. You can put your hand on your chest and you can feel your heart beating, pounding up and down. But I'm not talking about that heart. I'm talking about something that's much deeper. It's the condition of our heart before God. In the book of Job, we find a man who faced unwavering faith, unimaginable trials and tribulations. In the blinking of, of an eye, he lost everything dear to him. He lost his wealth, his health, and even his loved ones. Now, a lot of us, if we just lose our health, we want to turn away from God, turn back and don't want to serve him anymore, don't want to worship him anymore, just because we lost our health. We're not, we're not the best physically or mentally, but not Job. He lost his wealth, health, and his loved ones, all his children, his wife, everything, everything that he owned, he lost. But yet in the midst of his suffering, Job clung to his faith with a tenacity as in I'm not, do, I, I'm not turning my back on God. I'm not going to leave my faith just because of this. This is a trial that I must go through. And it's a lot of times there's trials that we go through and we wonder, why do I have to deal with this? Why do I have to handle this? Why do I have to hold on to this? I'm tired of all these trials and tribulations and problems and everything that are going on in my life. I'm tired. And in your heart and your mind, you're like, I'm just going to let it go. I, I, I'm, I'm not going to deal with it no more. Just you go that way, and I'm going to keep going this way because I'm tired. 
but not Job. Through it all, he remained steadfast in his faith. He cried out to God, questioning him and struggled with his circumstances, but he never lost sight of God's sovereignty. The story of Job teaches us that our hearts matter to God. In the midst of his suffering, Job's heart remained devoted to God, even when his friends, even when our friends, our family members, people, they, they turn, out, turn their backs on you, they, they leave you, they don't, they don't come back, they leave you where you stand, and they're like, well, why? I mean, you see all this stuff that's going on in your life, you can't even make it. You can barely pay your bills. You driving a raggedy car that you got to jump start every time you get in it. You living in the house where the door is almost hanging off the hinge. That's one of them little old houses there. <laughs> them old wooden houses. Right, creepy. Walking across the floor, you hear creak. Creek, like in the wood churches, but I love that sound in the wood church though. <laughs> but you're like your friends, family, everybody. Well, why are you still worshiping and going to serve and so devoted to a God that they think allowed all this to happen to you? A lot of time, it's not that God allowed it to happen to you. It's a trial that you have to go through. But when you make it to the end, I mean, like the children's story, the, at the end of the rainbow, it's a, it's a pot of gold. I ain't found that pot yet. Ever since I was little, I've been trying to find it, but I ain't found it yet. But that's just the children's story. But with God, when you make it through that trial, you make it to the end, there is glory. There is a blessing. There is triumph. You will triumph above everything that you've gone through. It's worth more than that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Worth way more. And that's where I'm trying to get. Amen? But what was it about Job that enabled him to endure such agony. What lessons can we glean from this story that are relevant to our lives today? First, Job teaches us the importance of faith in the face of adversity. Despite his circumstances, he refused to curse God or give in to despair. Instead, he uttered the words that have echoed through the ages. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Secondly, Job reminds us of the fragility of life and the importance well, what they thought was important, of worldly possessions. Possessions. In this world, obsessed with material things, material wealth, money, houses, cars, bling bling, clothes, shoes. Well, I know shoes definitely is my thing. <laughs> shoes and perfume. Oh my lord. Whew. But in this society, we, we so stuck on material things, materialistic things, and the status, our status quo, where we're at in life. I'm better than you. I'm going to get this before you do. I'm going to do this before you do it. So much competition, back and forth, back and forth. You see me doing something, then you want to jump and go do it and, and wonder and say, I can do it better. 
But that's competition. There is no competition in God. There is no competition with God. God does not prefer me over Sister London. God does not prefer Sister London over me. We may have, well not may have, we have two different callings. No one has the same calling. No one is here on this earth to do the same exact thing. I may be a minister, Sister London may be a minister, but I could be called to the nations and she could be called here. So I don't know why there's so much back and forth competition in the church. Everyone should be working towards the same thing, which is to do the will of God. Whatever he calls us to do, that's what we do. Whatever he wants us to do, that's what we do. And what is that? His will. What he has called you to be. His story serves as a reminder that true fulfillment cannot be found in earthly treasures. The things that we desire and want, it will not be found in earthly treasures. We may feel on top of the world because we got a family made that millionaire status. Lord, I'm trying to get there. Okay. But yeah, make that millionaire status and we think we're happy. We're happy. But in reality, no, we're not. We're not happy. Because you can have all the money in the world, but if your heart is stony, your heart is hardened, you're, you're bitter, there's no unforgiveness in your heart. It, it doesn't matter. You can have the finest houses, finest cars, and everything, and still, still be miserable. But if you have God in your life, God is your head, you're working for him, you are doing his will, you are doing what he's called you to do, you are striving, you are pressing towards him, and you are a millionaire, come on now. You're going to be happy. What does it say? I'm going to be happy in him. Hallelujah. Amen. Thirdly, Job challenges us to examine the condition of our own hearts. Are we truly serving God out of love and devotion? Or are our motives tainted by self-interest? Like Job, let us strive for a heart that is pure and steadfast, unwavering in its commitment to the divine, which means God committed to him and his will. Amen. And lastly for Job, Job exemplifies the power of perseverance. Everything that he went through, everything that he lost, all of his friends, his wife, everything, everybody telling him to turn his back on God because God has turned his back on him. Not knowing that God had a conversation with, the, with, with Satan, with the devil, and told him, try, try my, my boy, Job. I know he ain't going to turn on me. Try him. Go ahead. Go ahead and try him. Now, Lucille, I don't know about her. Lucille might, but go ahead and try Job. I, I, I'll let you go ahead. Do whatever you want to do. But don't. You can't kill him. You can't take his life. But I, I promise you he won't change. I promise you he'll still be faithful. Can God say that about us? Can he say that about you? 
If he takes everything from you in the blink of an eye and everything is gone, will you still trust him? Will you still have faith in him? Will you still believe him? Will you still press towards the mark of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus? Will you? Can he still depend on you if everything was taken away from you in a blink of an eye? Can he still trust you? Now, as we look at that story of Job, let's not just look at his endurance, but let us allow his example to penetrate deep into our own souls. Let us take a heart check on ourselves. Examine, examine our motives, our faith, and embrace the challenges that come our way with courage and grace. Again, but what about us? How is our heart condition today? How is your heart condition today? Will you still love God? Can he still trust you if you had nothing? Can he still trust you if you had nothing? Are our hearts filled with love, compassion, and faith? Or are they burdened by bitterness, doubt, and sin? Sometimes the trials in life that we go through cause our heart to grow hardened. It gets hard. We face a lot of disappointments, betrayals, and setbacks that leave us feeling broken and weary. We then wonder why God allows all these things to happen or question his plans for our life. Have you ever questioned the plan that God has for your life? I do all the time. God probably tell me, hush woman, every day you asking me, you talking to me about this, you are battling back and forth with, what is the plan for my life? Who, who am I? Who have you called me to be? I'm like, Lord, I just want to be sure. Be like, are you sure? Are you sure this is what you want me to do? Are you sure this is where you want me to go? Go back and forth with God with everything. But even in our moments of doubt and despair, God is still at work in our hearts. He longs to hear our brokenness. He longs to mend our wounds. And he longs to restore us back to wholeness. But it requires us, requires us to allow him access. Access to the deepest parts of us, of our beings. We don't have a problem with allowing friends, family, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, giving them access to the deepest parts of us. Become very vulnerable to them. But in the same token, God wants us to be like that with him. He wants access to the deepest parts of us. He wants you to open up, open your hearts and to his love and his grace. That's what he wants from us. Wrapping this up today, how do we conduct, conduct a heart check? How do we conduct a heart check? It starts with honesty. With examining our hearts in the light of God's truth, 
we must be willing to acknowledge our shortcomings, confess our sins, and seek forgiveness from God and others. Then we must cultivate a heart of gratitude. Despite his suffering, Job never lost sight of God's goodness. He recognized that every blessing in his life was a gift from God, and he gave thanks even in the midst of his trials. So we have to learn to, no matter what happens, give thanks. We too have to cultivate a heart of gratitude by counting our blessings, no matter how small they may seem. When we focus on the goodness of God, it changes our perspective and fills our hearts with joy. We must nurture a heart of compassion. Job was known for his compassion towards the poor and the needy. He cared for the widow, the orphan, and the stranger in his midst. Do you have a heart that cares, that cares for others? A giving heart? Not just giving, but you have to receive too, a receiving heart. It changes our perspective and it fills us. Amen? We are called to love our neighbors as ourselves, to show kindness, mercy, and compassion to those in need. When we open our hearts to others, we reflect the love of Christ and bring hope to a hurting world. Amen? We must surrender our hearts to God's will. Job's ultimate surrender came when he declared, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. He entrusted his life, his future, and his very soul into God's hand. We must surrender control of our lives to God, trusting in his wisdom and his sovereignty. It means letting go of our own plans and desires and allowing God to guide us along his perfect path, his way. Amen? In this conclusion, now I'm finally wrapping it up. In conclusion, let us heed the words that were prayed. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. May we continually examine our hearts, cultivate gratitude and compassion, and surrender our lives to God's will. For it is in doing so that we will experience true joy, true peace, true fulfillment, the kind that can only come from the heart of God the kind that can only come from a heart that is fully surrendered to God. Now we're going to go back to Job again. Job, it, 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 the story, it serves as a timeless testament to the power of faith. Because his, his faith was strong. He, it, it didn't waver. It didn't rock even though he may have wanted to quit. He may have wanted to just give up, but he didn't because he still had faith in God. Amen? It can only come from God. As we look back at Job, what he did, who he was, the resilience of the human spirit and the sovereignty of God. Through Job's journey, though his journey of loss, suffering, he 
also got restored. He also received restoration. Everything he lost, he got back. That plus more. Plus more. And we are reminded of the importance of maintaining steadfast faith. Even in darkest times, as we move through life, may we draw strength from Job's examples. Trusting in the wisdom and goodness of a God who is always present, even when circumstances seem to get worse and not better. Let us conduct regular heart checks on ourselves, ensuring that our motives are pure, our faith unwavering, and our spirits tuned to the divine. Just as Job emerged from his trial strong and strengthened more in his faith, may we too, may we find redemption and restoration in the midst of our own struggles. And may the lessons learned from Job's story guide us on our journey towards a deeper, more meaningful relationship with our creator, with his, which is God. When we make up our minds to move, move forward, to be unmovable, to be unshakable, to not be able to be knocked off our feet, to stand strong, may the words of Job echoed in our hearts. Let it echo. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. May we hold fast to this trusting, knowing that in due time, our faithfulness will be rewarded and our hearts will be forever transformed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise for his word today. Amen. Amen. Let's do Continue to remember to keep our hearts in check. To know that whatever God wants, whatever his will, that's what we want. Amen? Amen. Just want to say a prayer. Over Is there anyone who needs prayer or desires prayer today? Amen. 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 Lord, we just thank you, God, for this request, God. This is God, a uh, mother's request, Jesus. And Lord, Lord, God, we pray, God, that you strengthen her family, God. Bring them closer, God, together, God. Bring them closer, God, to you, O oh God. That they know you, God, more. That they reach out more to you, O oh God. That they give their heart totally and completely to you, God. That their lives, God, will be turned, God, completely over to you, O oh God. And they will be able to come together as a family, God, to worship you. They come together, God, as a family, God, to praise you, God. They come together as a family, God, to just love on each other, God, and love on you, oh, God, and strive, God, to go forth, God, even more, God, and stronger in you, oh, God. So send your power and your anointing, God, to this family, God. Through this mother, God, a mother's heart, God, a mother's prayer, God, for her children, God, for her family, God, for her husband, God, for everyone connected to her, oh God. Lord, let them be blessed, God, because of her, God. Let her be blessed, God, because of what she do, God, and how she gives, God, and how she desires, God, to be more, God, like you, oh God. Lord, continue to touch, God, her heart, God, even more, God. 
If there's anything that is not like you, oh God, we take it out. We call it out now in the name of Jesus, God. Lord, continue to send peace, God. Send your anointing, God, your glory, God. And we give you praise, God, in Jesus' name, because it is so and so it is. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
Your place is forward, not backwards. Why, says the Lord, do you keep going back? When I've called you forward, take another step. I've called you forward. Why do you keep going back? I called you forward. Take another step. I called you to come forward, says God. says the Lord. Why do you keep going back? Everything that you need is in you. So it's already there. Why do you keep fighting with my will? Says the Lord. I called you. I called you. He said, I wouldn't call you if it wasn't anything there. He said, I called you. I need you to come forward. 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 Says God. Says the Lord. Says the Lord God. I need you to come forward, says the Lord God. I need you to come forward, says the Lord God. I need, I need you to come forward, says the Lord God. Says the Lord God. Says the Lord God. Says the Lord God. Come forward to your rightful place. Yabando. Come forward. To your rightful place, Yabano Kosia. Come forward, Yabano Kosia. To your rightful place, Yabano Kosia. Come forward to your rightful place. He said, I called you up. I called you up, Namando. So, Baba Yara Kosia. Say bye bye, Yara Kosa. Keep coming forward. That's what he wants you to do. To keep coming forward. Don't go backwards. Forward, not backwards. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Rubaba na ro ko si amanda ro seba ki amando ko si anama ko baba ya ro ko si amanda se wo ho 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 the lord god says to this house he says don't lose what I've already sent here. The anointing, the glory, the power is here in this place. We have to pursue it. We have to go forth. We can't sit on what God has put in us. We can't sit on who God has called us to be. We can't sit on what he's put in his house. Because there's glory here. There's glory here. There's glory here. He said, all you have to do is reach up and grab it. It's in this place. It's in this place. The word of God is in this place. The word of God is in this place. Deliverance and healing is in this place. His anointing, his glory, and his power is in this place. Yamano ho shiama. It's in this place. Stop resisting. 
resisting what God has already done here. He wants to do so much more. He wants to send so many more people here, but he can't until those who are here come together. Get it together. Work together, move together. Once we receive what's in this place, he'll send more people so that what we have in us can be deposited into them too. And then there's more people, more people, and more people, more worshipers, more praisers, more, just more. That's what he wants to give us in this place, more. There's more, there's more, there's more, there's more. More, 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 more. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There's another level that God wants to take. This house. But he can't until everybody gets on one accord. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. He can't until there's willing vessels. Everyone has to be willing and it has to be open. Their hearts have to be open. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord God. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. My God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I turn it back over to the hands of our leader. Prophet Dr. Terrence Kruger. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise for the word today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Tell somebody, check your heart. Tell somebody else, check your heart. Hallelujah. We got to do a heart check daily. Glory to God. We got to do a heart check daily. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God is good. He is so good. He's so worthy of praise. He's so honorable. We thank him for what he's doing. We thank him for what he's doing. Thank him for what he's done. Glory to God. I was waiting for you. Glory to God. The Lord spoke to me as she was ministering to you um, about coming forward. And the Lord say, tell her when she puts enough effort into what I've called her to, like she does her marriage, I'll heal her. But God says until the effort comes forth, he said, you got to have a passion for what I've called you to. He says, to have an inward desire, but no action is not enough. Because my word says, faith without works is dead. He says, I've called you to life. So everything about you has to live. Your purpose has to live. Your calling has to live. Just like your marriage has to live. God says, the season that you're in, he says, you're distracted. He says, you're distracted. But the thing is, God says, you got to make sure that your attention is more on what I've called you to than what your heart has called you to. Because God says, I have ways to get your attention. This message was for you. God says, heart check. But I love God. I do what I can to please God. That ain't what he's talking about. Because one thing about it is, when we say, I'll do what it takes to please you, that means that if you call me to do something, I'm going to make sure I do everything I can to make sure it gets done. Whatever. 
God has called you to, whatever position or posture he has called you in, make sure you do everything you can to do it. I hear the Lord say, no more excuses in this season. No more excuses. There are some things that get held up when we hold up. I'm going to say that again. I'm talking to everybody. There are some things that get held up when we hold up. So when we fail to walk in alignment with God's perfect will, we don't experience the full benefits of what was in the will's way. So God might have had something set up along the way for you as you were working. But because you never worked, you can't ever see it. And we'll stand here and say, God, when are you going to do it? When are you going to do it for me, God? I'm believing you, but it, I don't see any manifestation. I don't see anything because God says manifestation is in movement. Lord, have mercy. Manifestation is in the works. Somebody say manifestation is in the works. Faith without works is dead. I could believe for something all day, but until I put action with it, I'll never see manifestation. Mother, I'll never see manifestation without works. <laughs> I could sit, watch this, I could sit at home and say, I'm gonna catch the bus, but if I never make a move to get to the bus stop, I won't catch no bus because it's not coming to my house. God, oh, Lord, have mercy. I heard the Lord says, I'm not going to make everything convenient for you in this season. But God said, you're going to have to move out of comfort to get where you need to go. God's not going to do everything for us. We're waiting on something supernatural to overtake us or supernatural to move us. It's not going to always happen. It's your faith that will drive you to do something. Like this message today, heart check, God ain't going to do that for you. That's something you got to do. And once you check your heart and you examine to see what needs to be done, you got to do something, not God. God is not the one that put us in the position. Notice that even when Job went through his trials, his tribulations, Job didn't blame God because he realized it's not God. God allowed the enemy to test Job. But God had enough faith in Job. Watch, oh Lord have mercy. Watch this, somebody gonna catch this. God had enough faith in Job that he made a move to let the devil. Even God does not have faith without works. We're created in his image and his likeness, so we have to make sure that we look like him. We operate like him in the earth. Faith without works. Somebody say, faith without works is dead. I won't see it unless I work. But watch this. Even with Job, he had to have faith in God, that God, you know, I don't understand what's going on, but you know, and you're the one that made me, and you're the one that can bring me through. But even if you don't, I'm going to trust you to the end. His faith came even in actions of him being steadfast and not being moved. That brought him out that watch this not just brought him out sister Belinda but caused him to reap after he came out watch this he reaped when he came out of his rough season because his posture didn't change because his heart was still in the same position God, I'm still going to serve you. I'm going to still give you praise. I'm going to still do what you called me to do. I ain't, I ain't going to let what's going on in my body. I'm not going to let what's going on in my life and my circumstances stop me or hinder me from doing what I'm supposed to do. Why? Because my faith says 
you are the God that made me, you are in control. And so I know that it, you are well able to bring me through. Even when I don't see any signs, I'm going to still stay faithful. Watch this. Even when I say faithful, his faithfulness was his works. His posture was his works. Him still believing God was his works. And watch this. His works brought manifestation. So everything he lost, he gained back greater than what he had. He might not have got his wife back. He might not have got his children back. But God made sure that he was well off. He was well off better than he was before. See, sometimes God got to get rid of those people to get them out your way because they're too much of a distraction. They're too much of a hindrance. And you can't see it because your heart too connected. Sometimes God got to put you in a position that he start letting what's in them start bubbling up because you were so struck by blindness of what you saw in your heart that you couldn't see what was really in them. Then when God start letting stuff fall apart, you don't understand. Why? Because I was too blind by what I felt. And I couldn't see what God was trying to do. So the devil is good for business. You know why? Because the devil's real good at applying pressure. Because the devil knows you and he knows if you'll break. That's why he don't, that's why oftentimes he won't stop. And he's very consistent and persistent. There are times he'll tell the devil to leave you alone, he'll leave him back off. But there are times where he'll keep pressing you. Why? Because he knows your limits. When are you going to prove the devil wrong and say, I'm going past what you know? The devil know if I just tried them about 10 times, they'll break. Because I know they ain't got it in them because they ain't strong enough. They don't even pray enough. Uh-oh. They don't even seek the Lord enough. You know? They got more time on their job than they do in prayer. Oh, Lord. They got more hours in on a check than they do seeking the Lord. They got more time spent on the phone with their friends than they do <laughs> pursuing what I called them to do. So when your time is, when, when, you're, when you're unbalanced like that, the devil knows you don't have enough strength because it's in God's presence, it's in his word, it's in prayer, it's in worship that you gain strength. Something changes when I get in his presence. That's why the devil don't want you there. That's why the devil, oh, don't raise your hand. Just raise your hand in your heart. How many of y'all struggle in the area of prayer and seeking God? You're not consistent. You know why? Because the devil is fighting you like he did Job. That's an affliction spiritually. But is your posture still steady? Or do you fall off whenever you get hit? You fall off when you get distracted. <laughs> Watch this. So say, hey, bro, let's go to the movies. But I knew I was getting ready to spend time with the Lord. Well, I could do this later. And I keep pushing it off till it never happens. Job. Watch this. So say, bro, you ought to curse God. You ought to push him to the side. You ought to kill. Watch this. You ought to curse your God. You ought to kill him off in your life because he's not as important. Come hang with us. Oh, Lord. Trying to bring it to your time. You, 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 you know, let's, 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 let's talk on the phone. Brother Brandon, let's, let's communicate from sunup to sundown that you never have time to pray. That you never have time Watch this, to study the word so that you can be effective in ministering the word. So that you can be effective in doing what God called you to do. Just wait till the last minute and try to conjure something up. Don't 
give God no attention, curse God and kill your spiritual life. <laughs> what, what, what did his wife say? She came with a hopeless message that's straight up the devil. Curse God and die. Kill God off of your life and die. And that's what's happening to some of y'all. The devil is having his way and that's why your spiritual life is dead. That's why your spiritual life is on, on the verge of dying. You are at an all-time low and you ain't got no strength. That's why you can't keep your mouth closed when somebody confronts you. Because you don't have enough spiritual strength to just be quiet. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. It's your fault, Sister Belinda. Thank you, Jesus. But God say, when you fight for what I called you to, like you fight for your husband, then you'll see change. But God said, I will have no other God before me. Thank you, Lord. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Thank you, Jesus. See, I'm, I'm that prophet that's going to get you healed and whole. See, y'all thought God was talking about a healing naturally. No, he want to heal her confidence. He want to heal her in her mind. He want to heal her in the area of how she sees herself. He want to heal her in the area of how she feels that she's incapable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Glory. Glory. I hear the Lord say, tell her what she's asking me for. Like Sister Belinda already said, I already gave it to you. You're just not using it. <laughs> it is not using it God says there's even more that I've called you to than just those things that you're focused on that you want to do he said how long will you sit on it glory to God I hear the Lord say get the moving get the moving get the moving Get the moving. All you have to do is just chew on what God is saying and then make moves. Make moves. Make moves. Make moves. Make moves. Amen. Glory to God. You know, to get the house and the car prophecies, that's wonderful. But I want something that's going to make me whole. I want those things that's going to heal me because I don't want to have a house and a car and still go to hell. I want to have a house and a car and I'm still struggling on the inside. I, I want to have a house and a car and then, you know, and I'm, I'm still not healed. You know, I'm still damaged. Because what's the purpose of getting a new car? You still riding around feeling bad. What's the purpose of walking in a new house and you walking in with tears in your eyes? You can't even be happy. You ain't got no joy, you ain't got no peace. What's the purpose of serving in ministry? You ain't got no joy because you so distracted because everybody got more attention than God. Mm. You know, it's when you get in the presence of God, let me tell you something. That is, it is something. I think a lot of times when we when we come before God and worship and spending time with him we always look to feel something and if I don't feel something then God wasn't with me stop looking for goosebumps and looking for something to crawl on your skin it is a knowing that you have to have that God is with me it ain't something that I'm looking for a feeling but the deeper I go the more I experience Sister April, you might go and spend time with the Lord today and feel nothing, but I know he's with me. Why? Because I know what his word says. You don't seek God and pursue God and he don't show up. Watch this, unless you're rushing. 
You know the problem with us, we can't last five minutes in worship. The only thing we know how to do is just ride in our car and sing. And half the time, that ain't even for God, it's for us. Because the song make us feel good. <laughs> because when, when the song goes to God, guess what? Something start happening. A presence starts entering the car. A presence starts entering the room. And all of a sudden, I'm just, oh my God. I become overwhelmed with joy because I begin to think about what the Lord has done. Think about how good he is. When we start praising him just because of what he did and what he going to do and learn to just praise him for who he is, that takes us into new levels of experiencing God. <laughs> Lord have mercy new levels you start to experience certain aspects of God that you ain't never know he had uh, you know it's sad sister, uh, sister April that the only aspects of God that we know is when he can heal when he can deliver those are what he can offer but how much do you know about him how much do you know about him his track record what he likes, what he don't like. You know, what he desires. You know why we don't know too much? Because all we ever focus on is, God, I want you to fulfill my desires. Give me what I want. But when are we going to try to pursue what he wants? Many of us are guilty. <laughs> Many of us are guilty. God's not going to compete with your desires. He's not going to compete with your heart. The moment God begins to see that something else is starting to become and have more attention out of you than him, he'll get in the way of it. And sometimes he'll move it out of your way. You better ask me. I had God to disconnect me from people that I truly cared about because I put them too high. God has ways of dealing with stuff to get your attention. And he don't care nothing about you getting mad at him. Because that, that ain't his main message that he's trying to get out of you. He'll sit there and let you be angry. He'll sit there and let you be mad until you get the point. And his hopes are that you get the point before it's too late for you. Because the moment you curse God, you die. Why? Because now it gives the devil full access to come and tear your life to shreds. Lord have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. So I, I, I stand. And I'm, I'm excited to change my posture to get in to come into a better place a better state of my heart <laughs> glory to God this word even goes to sister London that I hear the Lord say to her is your choice. God says, I've given you everything that you need concerning life and godliness, but it's your choice whether you walk in it. Many of us have distractions and things that have gotten us off track. We need to repent. So we're going to open this time right now for us to make things right with the Lord. Glory to God. I'm not going to call no line. I ain't laying hands on nobody. I ain't prophesying. This is your time. Talk to them. Because I can't do it for you. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus.
That's right. Give it to him. Come on, surrender to him today. We won't put it in the way, Lord. We move it. We put life in order by putting you first. Yes, Lord. We surrender, Lord. We surrender, Lord, to your will, to your way. Lord, we won't continue to allow the fruit to entice us, the enemy's voice to convince us. Ah, Yabaso, Rabababa We won't continue to indulge in those things that don't mean us any good, that put our spiritual life in jeopardy. Help us, Lord, as we help ourselves. <laughs> help us, Lord, as we help ourselves. Help us, Lord. As we help ourselves, give us wisdom. Order our steps, Holy Ghost. We want you to get the full glory out of our lives. I ain't sharing it with my friends. I ain't sharing it with nobody. I don't even want to touch your glory. I want you to get it. called my life into spiritual alignment with your will with your way do what you want to do God because it ain't about me but if I want to see the fulfillment of your promises I got to make sure that my life is in alignment to see fulfillment thank you Lord thank you Lord Thank you that you don't, don't give up on me. Thank you that you'll never leave me nor forsake me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, that you have not given. Hey, glory to God. Thank you that you haven't given up. Every day that we live is another chance to do better. We thank you for the gift called life. And not just natural life but the life in Christ. Thank you for not just having life, but life more abundantly. Thank you, Lord. Because we understand that living an abundant life means that we have everything that we need. There's an overflow of healing, overflow of deliverance, overflow of breakthrough, overflow of deliverance, overflow of provision, overflow more than enough, abundant bursting out thank you Lord thank you Lord because when we begin to overflow we have something to pour into others but when we are empty we can't feed anybody. We can't help anybody. We can't strengthen anybody. So we understand. 
we understand that your presence is our very lifeline. Thank you, Lord. We understand that your very presence is our lifeline. Without your presence, we can't even breathe. We can't live, move, and have our being. We need your presence, and we need your spirit. Lord, don't take your spirit from us. We need it. We need the Holy Ghost to walk with us, to guide us, to lead us in all truth, to expose every lie that we don't walk in deception. Help us, Lord. Deliver us, Lord. Deliver us from our own wicked ways. For if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves, not be prideful, not feel like we got it all together, not walk in deception, turn from their wicked ways and seek his face then he will hear from heaven and he'll heal their land there's a healing tell yourself there's a healing for me there's a healing for my body there's a healing for everything I can't hear you there's a healing for everything that's connected to me everything that is a part one thing about land is it deals with property something that you have ownership over but watch this everything that is tied to you has the ability healing causes a cure that means to make well or to cause things to function like they're supposed to so therefore if he heals your lands then that means he has to make everything about you come together and work right. Everything got to flow right. It got to function right. It got to operate right. It got to be corrected. Some of you need spiritual surgery. But you'll only find it in his presence. Watch this, Sister April. Some of you will get in God's presence and you won't be healed immediately. It might take 45 days of consistent seeking <laughs> sometimes because watch this God knows how to develop consistency and he knows some of us true that a man is if he give you something right away you'll leave him until you need another fix sound like drug addicts God say I'm not your fix of a drug he say I'm something that's supposed to be permanently fixed I'm not your little high that you get to escape life. I am the one that is your life. <laughs> Glory to God. And then watch this, when I get in his presence, there are times that I experience a high. Glory to God. Now watch this, he begins to alter my reality. For real, somebody say for real. Cause see this little smoking and doing drugs and all that kind of stuff, that don't do nothing but alter your reality temporarily and it's fake. And it lets the enemy in. But I need a real, I need a real substance that will alter my reality and it will be the real deal. And his name is Jehovah. Glory to God. We thank you, Lord, for our lives belong to you, and you only will we serve. Glory to God. Mm. Worship the Lord your God. Tell your neighbor, worship the Lord your God. Come on, some of y'all disobedient. I say, tell your neighbor, worship the Lord your God. 
and him only shall you serve. <laughs> him only shall you serve. Him only shall you serve. <laughs> we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For we should take the posture of Job to know that no matter what comes, <laughs> we shall take the posture of Job that no matter what comes, I won't be moved. I won't be changed. I won't be shifted. Because my posture is fixed. And ain't nothing the devil can do about it. <laughs> Come on, give the Lord a praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. At this time, we're going to get ready for our time of giving. Let's get ready for our tithe and offering. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. For those of you that are given by cash, check, or card, you can see Sister Belinda and Sister April at this time. For those of you that are watching online, if you would like to give by cash app, you can do so at dollar sign TDCMI. I'm sorry. I think I got that wrong. Dollar sign TDCM International. Again, that's dollar sign TDCM international or you can give at paypal.me forward slash tdcmi again that's paypal.me forward slash tdcmi and you want to select family and friends glory to god or you can go to the website at terrencedkruger.com and there you have all the giving options and the direct links um, and the selections are already made for you all you have to do is just fill everything out Amen. Glory to God. To those of you that are joined, have joined us online, thank you so much. And if you are giving, please specify in the chat that you're giving on today. Glory to God so that we can touch and agree with you as well. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you so much. Glory to God. Glory to God. If there are any prayer requests online as well, please type them in the chat. Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, we thank you for every person that has given this week and on today. We declare that you're now opening the windows of heaven, pouring out blessings that we don't have room enough to receive. We thank you for more than enough. Thank you for the overflow. Thank you that you're now rebuking the devourer for our sake, which means devils, you have to back up of our finances, our financial status, our bank and credit union accounts, our credit scores, our possessions, lack poverty, and off of our bodies. Lack poverty and debt, you got to go now because the Lord God rebukes you in Jesus' name. And all those expecting a harvest, you know what to do. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. That was kind of weak for people expecting something great from the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't wait till you see the manifestation. Praise him for it now. Glory to God. 
Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. When we're done with prayer, y'all just be dismissed. Amen. Don't wait for me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give God a praise today for what he has done. Thank you, Jesus. At this time, we're going to open up. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Sister Belinda, you can go ahead and thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. At this time, if you have a prayer request or a testimony, hallelujah, please come forth at this time. Thank you, Jesus. Good evening. Good evening. I have two um, testimonies. So the first one, I'm going to tell you about how God had to get my mind together. And then he sent me on vacation to get my mind together. <laughs> so, um, you know, God, he know our inner thoughts or whatever. Like what we don't speak, he know. And he checked it. So it was like one, um, one Thursday, I think it was like dive in time. And I called myself and want to come. And he just did it so like just nice and just sweet. And he was like, basically like daughter, You've been saying, you know, you want a break. Diving is your time to just sit down and just eat my word. And I was like, oh, Lord, you are right. And so I got, like, happy instantly. So I'm like, okay, God. So, like, last Thursday, I was excited. And he was like, see, you keep praying for stuff. And we, we just praying. We don't even be knowing what we'll be praying for. Just in his presence, just begging. And then he give it to us, and we overlook it. So I just wanted to share that and like, you know, he know us and he care. And it wasn't that I was complaining or anything like that. It's just, I want to sit down and eat his word and Thursdays are my day. And it ain't take no years to get my day. So I'm happy for my day. <laughs> so the second one was back in January, God had already told me to take a vacation and don't take nobody. So before the vacation had started, you know how we do try to plan everything, not, not leaving no room for God and everything just crumble so I said you know what I'm gonna just fall back onto what I know prayer I said God I, I don't got the money I don't got the vehicle but you told me to go I thought I waited to the last minute I said well what you want me to ask somebody to take me like God I don't know what you want me to do so as I began to walk in my yard just walk and just walk things just start dropping in my spirit I heard greyhound oh the greyhound okay let me see what the greyhound about so it was like as I began to like follow his step, it was like he was dropping like bits and pieces of peace, 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 peace. So even with the Greyhound, I, you know me, I ain't ask him what time you want me to leave. I'm, oh God, I want to leave this time because I want to do X, Y, and Z. He pushed everything back. So I was like, okay, why well, I get here so late? What you want me to do? And it's like the things that I had asked God for in Gainesville, the answer came through my Uber driver. And it was like the peace of God had settled on me. Just simple stuff. And it was like, basically, like out of everything that that person said, he was like, April, like, how do you want God to bless you and you being disobedient? Like, God, he not, he not a liar. He just needs you to do what he told you to do. And it was like, as I was on my way to Orlando, God started showing me the things in my heart that he need to get out of me before he blessed me because I messed it up. So it was like, as I began to get to where God was taking me, I can hear him. It was like he was so, it was like in Orlando, everything was so, like, so quiet. Cause in Gainesville, there, I feel it with distractions. I feel it with, don't listen to God. Do what we say. Don't, don't go to church. Don't pick up your word, girl. Come over here and party. But it's like in Orlando, I was by myself. And I said, God, I ain't got nobody here, but I trust you. And it was like, I be, I like, I know what God got for me. I know who, who I am, who he say I am. It was like, so much peace was like placed on me. And it's like, I just feel so new. Like nobody can't tell me that I'm not going to serve him. If he take everything, he take all three of my kids. I'm still going to serve him. I'm still going to serve him. I'm going to serve him to the day Christ come and get me. And I just want to share that with y'all. Like when he say something, do it. And don't be like, even like my bank account said, I wasn't supposed to be in Orlando. I was in Orlando with a smile and I ate every day. So glory, all, all the glory belongs to you, God. And that's it. <laughs> to God. We thank God for that. Yeah. Hallelujah. Do we have any more praise reports or testimonies at this time? 
Well, amen. Glory to God. Let's go ahead and get that stuff situated. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So we thank God, and I thank God for every one of you um, um, that have been praying for me and my family um, as we buried my grandmother yesterday. Um, and um, like I was telling our team, we got to do better as a ministry supporting one another in times of close loss like that, I say, because we I've watched funerals over the last few years and nobody shows up but one or two people. We can't keep doing that. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. So we want to do better. It ain't just the team. We want the whole ministry, those who are here and not here. We want the whole ministry to start doing better with trying to support one another because we all have a time that we're going to need family. Amen. Glory to God. So I thank God for you once again. Um, everything was beautiful and um, um, God is good. Amen. God is good. I thank God. Um, let's get ready to stand to our feet at this time as we get ready to leave this place. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you so much for everything that we have experienced on today. We give you glory, honor, and praise. And Father, as we go our separate ways, we declare there shall be no hurt, harm, or danger, no incidents or accidents. Hmm. Susan Belinda, come. Put your hand over her hand. Matter of fact, you move your hand. Put your hands where her hands were. Um, because I heard the Lord say this. We declare, you good. We declare in the name of Jesus that no tumors will form. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, Put your strength in the womb. In every female area, we declare, Father, that you are a healer. You are a redeemer. You are a restorer. And, Father, I declare now in Jesus' name that you will heal this body. I thank you that there should be no tumors. Declare there should be no cancerous aspects. In the name of Jesus, but we declare it is well. In Jesus' name, even past what the doctors may say, we declare it is well in the earth. For whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever is loosed on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So, Father, as I loose healing in the earth, it is loosed in the heavens that heaven backs this up now in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, somebody give the Lord praise. <clears throat> Father, we declare as we go our separate ways, there shall be no hurt, harm, or danger, no incidents or accidents, injuries or mechanical failures, no death or death reports. We declare that all is well. I loose the spirit of death from over this house and from those who are connected to you. In the name of Jesus, I declare this even over those who watch me online. And I declare that death shall not be your portion. It shall not be the portion of those who you know. In Jesus' name, we speak long life. In the name of Jesus, I command death back off. Now, in Jesus' name, loose and let go. In Jesus' name, loose now and let go. In Jesus' name, loose now. Let go now. In Jesus' name, let go. Loose the people. 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 And that spirit that has come to eat up somebody's mind, I command you go out. Now, out. In Jesus' name, loose now. In Jesus' name, we command stabilization to the mind in the name of Jesus Christ we declare it's done we are well we shall have a blessed and prosperous week and the rest of the month in Jesus name amen God bless you <laughs>